Thanks for joining me for this Met Office 10 day trend where we look at the big features of the weather and the patterns as we go into next week. Now, if you're with me last week, you'll know that we were flagging a big change from wet and windy to calmer and colder and frostier weather. That's happened, uh, but the week ahead promises a reversal of fortune. So we're saying goodbye to the high pressure that's dominated through the weekend and for the first half of this week. Things turning back to wet and windy weather, especially for next week. And in particular, we need to keep a close eye on Monday. More on that in a moment. Let's look at the big picture and the weather charts. This area of high pressure has dominated the UK scene uh, through the weekend and for the first half of this week. But fast forward to Sunday and that high is nowhere to be seen. Low pressure now in control. Lots of isobars across the chart and this weather front will bring a spell of rain from west to east on Sunday. Notice there's another area of low pressure down to the southwest. More on that later. Why the change? Well, let's look high up in the atmosphere and the position of the jet stream. Currently, it's to the north of the UK, which has allowed this big high just to settle in place. But uh, come Sunday and into next week, it's all changed. The jet has shifted southwards. It's intensified and it's now driving its way towards the UK. So much more changeable as we go into next week. And in particular, that jet stream could interact with that low pressure system. As I said, more on that in just a second. Let's rewind the clock and get back to the next few days because high pressure does remain in control. Weather fronts will try and dribble southwards, but they're fairly weak affairs. So generally, not a great deal of change through Thursday, Friday, not a huge amount of rain around, most places dry, quite misty and murky under that high pressure. And with more cloud around, uh, the nights are not as frosty. So overall, uh, the night's a bit milder. Then we'll start to see the change during the weekends. Now, again, large parts of England and Wales will still be dry on Saturday. This first weather front is a fairly weak affair, but as the jet starts to shift southwards, this next weather front will have more about it, bringing rain to Scotland and Northern Ireland. And then it swings from west to east on Sunday across England and Wales. That'll be the first significant rain uh, that large parts of the country will have seen for over a week. It's a cold front, so it also introduces colder air behind it, turning fresher as we go into Sunday night. But then we have to look further afield at this area of low pressure. I flagged it earlier, sitting currently in the relatively mild air. But don't forget, by this stage, the jet stream has shifted southwards. And the big feature in the weather over the next 10 days will just be how this low interacts with the jet and how it spins up and could potentially become quite a lively system, rapidly intensifying as it approaches the UK on Sunday and into Monday. So that by Monday, there's a chance this low, well, could be bringing some very windy conditions across the UK. Now, it all depends on that subtle interaction with the jet stream and the exact position of this low. And as you'd expect, five days ahead, there's a fair bit of uncertainty with that really subtle interaction between the jet and the low. And other computer models are suggesting slightly different outcomes. We are expecting wet and windy weather, but just how windy depends, as I said, on that interaction with the low and the jet. This is one computer model, the American model, suggesting that that low pressure may be to the north, may enter into the colder side of the jet, in which case it could really spin up further. And that would provide a very windy day across much of the UK. And that would really need watching. However, one of the other computer models, the European model, doesn't really want to develop that low as much, keeps it further south, keeps it on the warm side of the jet so it doesn't spin up as much. And that would just be a windy day across England and Wales. So yes, we're in for a wet and windy spell on Monday, but the details of just how windy, well, we'll have to firm up on that over the next few days. But it's definitely something we'll be keeping a very close eye on. Beyond Monday, well, the simple answer is it's looking changeable. That jet stream shifts south and then it doesn't really move too far. It means further low pressure systems are likely to dominate. And this chart shows that quite nicely. Uh, it's the most likely scenario in terms of the pressure pattern as we go through the rest of this week and into next week. Red means high pressure. So the high we've had this week hanging on and then a really strong signal that we flip over between Friday and Saturday and uh, from Sunday onwards, it's all blue. So it's low pressure will dominate throughout next week. 
But of course you can have different wind directions around an area of low pressure. So what's the most likely wind direction through next week? This next chart shows it quite clearly. It's a similar chart to this showing the most likely wind patterns. Uh, again, using the computer models that are run several times. Uh, red means easterly wind. So if you're after heavy snowfall, widespread heavy snowfall and beasts from the east, you need this to be red. And uh, as you can see, there is no sign of that. It remains blue, which means westerly winds are likely to dominate throughout next week. That means we'll continue to see low pressure systems bringing spells of wind and rain from the Atlantic. It doesn't look perhaps quite as mild as uh, earlier in the winter. So there are signs that when we see some wet weather, if it interacts with some colder conditions, we could see a little bit of snow, but most likely over hills across northern Britain, perhaps some at lower levels for a time. But uh, no real sign of any widespread cold or any beast from the east returning at this stage. That takes us into the start of February, of course. For day-by-day -day details, make sure you're following the Met Office on social media. Thanks for watching.